What's going on everybody? I just uh, thought I'd make a video on the iPad versus the Surface Go. I just uh, haven't seen anything on the internet about it and I just finished two semesters of mechanical engineering school using these two devices as a paperless student and I thought that I could just provide my thoughts on these devices. So starting out with price, um, the Surface Go. I bought it at my local Microsoft store for, uh, sorry, with a student discount for about $735, including the type cover and Surface Pen. Uh, and the iPad, $250 on Amazon. Apple Pencil, $80 to $100 on Amazon. Uh, $400 difference, keep that in mind. That's probably going to be a really important uh, factor for most of the people looking at this video. If you're a student, at least. All right, so build quality. The Surface Go is made out of magnesium. Uh, it's got this kickstand. It's very light, 1.15 pounds, I believe. Add the cover, it makes it 1.7. iPad, 1.03 pounds, made out of aluminum. Um, feels really nice in the hand. Uh, it's nice rounded corners the surface go has got pretty sh it's got sharper corners but not to the point of discomfort all right and software you got ios on your ipad which is standard anyone who's used a modern iphone knows what it's like knows how it behaves it's basically exactly the same there's some extra features that the ipad gets but nothing too fancy it's still the same base operating system. Meanwhile, you got Windows 10. Uh, it comes out of the box with Windows 10 S, but, oh, my battery's low. That's gonna be <laughs> something that I talk about in a bit. But uh, it comes out of the box with Windows 10 S, limits the downloads to the Microsoft Store, which is pretty bad. So thankfully, Microsoft offers a free upgrade to Windows 10 Home, which is quite important if you're gonna be doing anything you can't really download any complex applications with Windows 10S. So if you're an engineering student or any sort of student, you're probably gonna need to upgrade to Windows 10 Home. Regarding internals, the Surface Go runs the Intel Pentium Gold 4415Y at 1.6 gigahertz. So it's really slow. H, uh, HD graphics, Intel 615, uh, really slow. This thing does not perform very well, in my opinion. I've seen it lag for, during uh, web browsing, watching YouTube videos. Uh, I don't know what's up with it. Maybe it's just my model, because other people seem to think that it's just fine in the performance department, especially for being a super small device. Internally, um, passive cooling, not internally cooled, passive cooling. No fans on this, so it's completely silent. But uh, I'm just disappointed with it as an engineering student and someone who has a pretty beefy desktop. The smoothness isn't there. The experience just is not as fluid as it should be, especially for a Surface device, which is, I, I have high expectations for the Surface products and I think that they're a great concept. I don't think Microsoft is necessarily doing these as well as they could. Uh, all right, so moving over to the iPad. On the iPad, you've got the Apple A10 Fusion chip. It's the same one found in the iPhone 7, so if you've used an iPhone 7, it'll run literally the same as this. Uh, and in my experience, that has been extremely smooth, despite it only having two gigs of RAM. It's probably due to a lot of iOS's optimization. Uh, it's a mobile OS, so it's obviously gonna be a bit more streamlined than a desktop OS, but you can do a lot with uh, iOS right now. Definitely not as much as you can do with Windows, but in terms of paperless student stuff, this thing is pretty legit. 32.4-watt-hour uh, battery. Uh, comparing battery life between these two, I'd take, the, I'd take both of them, uh, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. I started out using the Surface. Uh, I could not make it through the entire day uh, through classes, four hours of actual use. It would definitely die, so I had to invest in a... USB power delivery battery that could charge through the USB-C port. Meanwhile, 
this never dropped below 50%, which is impressive, honestly. Uh, I could probably go to the library and have this at 100%. Probably wouldn't die for the entire day if I used uh, all the software on it that I normally use. So battery life is very impressive with the iPad. Speaking more about performance, uh, the Surface Go, I mean, it, it's slow, but it runs things fine, I guess. I, I can pull up SolidWorks on this, and it takes a while to open up, but once you're in, panning objects is smooth. I haven't really done any simulation work on it, but it doesn't crash or anything. It's capable. It's just a bit slower than something a bit bigger than it. All right, so the Surface Pen versus the Apple Pencil. Uh, the Surface Pen's really cool. I think it's really fun. It's got this uh, clicky eraser top, so you can literally erase as if it were a pencil. It's also got this uh, right click right here, so that lets you uh, select text, or it's like a function key. Just adds to the versatility of it. Uh, it takes a, yeah, it attaches magnetically to the side, which is really nice, honestly, something I miss with this. Uh, it takes a single quadruple A battery. Yeah, quadruple A. That's that's a lot of A's. I've never seen one before this. And it lasts like six months to a year, I've heard from some people, which is insane. Meanwhile, this thing lasts about 12 hours. Everyone knows how this charges. It's ridiculous, I know, but gotta show it on camera. This is just bad design. I don't know how someone at Apple okayed this. But oh well. Otherwise, this thing is extremely nice. It, it feels extremely quality in your hand. It's built really well. It rolls really easy, but that that's not really a big problem. Uh, accuracy is extremely good with this. Much more so than the Surface Pen. The feeling on the glass just is better. I, I like how this is. It's kind of, I don't know, hard <laughs> for the lack of a better term. But... The, because that's due to the different tips on the uh, pencils or styluses. This has a rubber tip, and it sort of it sort of gives a little bit, and it gives like the illusion of pressure, I guess. But this one just has one sort of just a hard tip on glass, so it's I don't know. It feels a bit smoother to me. It glides across the glass a bit easier. Moving on to note taking, uh, the Surface Go. I used OneNote and OneNote 2016. First of all, the fact that I have to use two apps is kind of ridiculous. Uh, OneNote is the better app in terms of actual writing and taking notes itself, but it lacks an export feature. So if I'm going to print something out for one of my classes, uh, I literally have to go to a different app entirely and open up my, my uh, OneNote folders and export from OneNote 2016, which is the desktop version. And that's just not as intuitive as the option on the iPad. I use Notability. It's $10 on the App Store. It has literally every feature I've ever used in OneNote in a much cleaner package and a much more functional package. Uh, tapping to export is as easy as a share button in the top left. Hit that. Go to your cloud service of choice. Um, you can actually even import PDF templates into Notability. I use dot paper, so I like to import a dot paper template on top of my notes so I can just have dot paper. You can do that with anything you'd like. You can import slides, same as OneNote. Anything that OneNote has, Notability also has. So that made my transition to the iPad a lot easier with iOS. So to summarize, I really like the Surface as a concept, not necessarily an execution. But I think that's something that Microsoft will continue to improve upon. But it's kind of taking them a while. They haven't really done anything to improve the tablet experience on Windows, which is quite bad in comparison to iOS and Apple's offering. I think it's just way too expensive for what it is. There's basically a $400 difference between these devices, specking them out at least. But that's just it's not justified at all uh 400 just to be able to run a few more programs absolutely not worth it especially as someone who has a primary computer a desktop at home 
plus the university offers computer clusters all over campus. So uh, it's hard for me to recommend getting the Surface Go unless you want to have a primary laptop and a secondary laptop and you want this to be your secondary laptop that you bring everywhere with you. But why would you have two laptops? I'd, I'd honestly just get like a beefy laptop and an iPad and that's cheaper. This thing is cheap. That's basically why I recommend this. This thing is so cheap. It's $250 plus this Apple Pencil, $100. $350 as opposed to $750. Even if you take away the keyboard, that's $130 off that price. Uh, what, $600? Yeah. $600 versus $350, that's still $250. For a lackluster software experience on here, it felt buggy. It felt slow. I, can, I can't even start to recommend this thing. I like it. I think it's great. But for what the competition is offering, it just can't hold up. So that those are basically my thoughts regarding these two devices. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more of this kind of stuff. I like to review things. This wasn't even a review. I could do a deep dive on these if you want. Uh, if you want me to talk about the various products I own. Uh, provide my thoughts on stuff going on in the tech industry. I love doing that stuff. I like to read a lot about it and uh, Comment what you thought about this video like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more the whole shebang All right, peace out guys